Venus stations retrograde in the royal, bright, and attention-driven Leo on Saturday, July 22nd. And for the next six weeks, we will be looking closely at our desires, relationships, and values. It might be the time to put some of them to rest or bring some back into existence even potentially bring someone back into your life. And while I do not recommend hooking up with exes, the retrograde of Venus could definitely be the period when they crawl back into your life. So let's take a closer look at Venus retrograde and Leo and break it down for all 12 signs. My name is Anastasia. I'm a traditional Western astrologer specializing in natal relationship and predictive astrology. If you'd like to work with me, you can book a reading at AnastasiaDoesAstrology.com. There are links down below. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe, leave me a like or a comment. I highly appreciate that. And it encourages YouTube to show my videos to more people. Before we dive in, um, as you may already know, I capture positive astrological moments and create candles and oils. And for this video specifically, I'd like to recommend that you get my Venus in Libra, Venus Kazemi or Moonlit Trinity candles or oils as they have potent, strong fusion properties and can help bring cooperation and harmony and love into your life as the retrograde period can actually be a bit tricky for that. I am filming today's video in the park, Riverside Park in New York City. So if there is a lot of background sounds, just know that that's the reason. Just trying something new, you know, experimenting <laughs> with Venus and Leo. So in general, Venus is the planet of love and desire. Venus describes everything we find appealing and attractive, starting from our tastes, finishing with the people that we choose to have in our life, our relationships, right? She is the glue that holds everything together. I wonder if filming outside will end up a lot louder than filming in my apartment. Um, and when Venus is direct, things to be tend to be a lot more straightforward, right? Like Venus has an 18 months long cycle. She goes retrograde approximately every 18 months. And when she's direct, we're sort of clear about the things we like, clear about people we want to have in our life. And then when she stations retrograde, she is journeying towards the sun because in her story, her story begins with a conjunction with the sun, where the sun being the planet of goals and ideals infuses her with meaning and gives her some kind of purpose. And then the story goes that as Venus goes away from the sun, she perhaps strays away far from the original kind of purpose, right? She starts to do pleasurable things for the sake of fun and less so for the sake of authenticity and so when she goes retrograde a lot of times it's the period of connecting with yourself and especially in the sign of leo the sign ruled by the sun in leo venus wants attention it wants to be recognized it wants to be appreciated but perhaps we go too far for the rec like too far in getting recognition or we forget what was their original motivation and sort of when the retrograde period begins it's your opportunity to reconnect to go back to the beginnings right so venus goes retrograde on july 22nd and the retrograde lasts until september 3rd and it will be especially important if you have any planets between 12 and 28 degrees fixed signs which is leo Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus, because these are the degrees that Venus is traveling across, meaning that she's going to be making aspects. If you have planets in Leo, she's going to be conjoining your planets. If you have planets in Aquarius opposing, and then Scorpio or Taurus making a square to them, meaning that this need to reconsider and rethink your values, rethink your desires becomes even more important for you. Last time we had this pretty much very similar retrograde because Venus retrogrades every eight years it's in the same sign so last time we had this retrograde in the summer of 2015 so take a look back at the summer of 2015 and think on what was happening in your life were there any romantic tensions and romantic tests that you were going through 
So what can we expect in general for all of us, right? We can feel somewhat insecure because when the planet of desire goes backwards and travels towards the heart of the sun and travels and goes on to this journey into the underworld, there might be a lot of ambiguity. And you may feel uncertain about what you're doing, who you like, what your goal is, right? There might be a lot of um, kind of... It's, it's interesting too because South Node goes into Libra on the 17th of July and South Node is ruled by Venus. So there's even more of a need to rethink our relationships, right? Like South Node in Libra is very much... Let's take a look at where are we pleasing other people? Where are we bending over backwards? Where are we kind of having, looking at things too idealistically? So with South Node being in Libra, being ruled by Venus retrograde, it's like a very, it's, it's an inception of an 18 month cycle because the nodes stay in Libra and Aries for 18 months. I actually did a video on that. And with Venus retrograding to start the cycle, it's it's very much, you know, we are on this precipice of Aries North Node and Libra South Node, meaning that we're moving away from being too entangled with others and we're moving towards finding equal, brave, independent relationships. And so I think this retrograde is very much about this energy of reconnecting with ourselves and starting to understand ourselves better. And Leo is another sign, like Aries is very self-driven, right? North Node will be in Aries for 18 months and Leo is very kind of, wants to be recognized, but wants to be recognized for being truthful and authentic. So feeling insecure um, is a symptom of the retrograde. Do not try to force the answers. Do not try to kind of act. I mean, I guess it's okay sometimes to fake it till you make it, but know that it's normal to feel a little confused and uncertain. And the retrograde phase is always about asking questions. It's not necessarily about finding answers. You can expect relationship drama, right? Relationships get tested during the retrograde and the right ones, the strong ones survive and get stronger. And the ones that were not strong to begin with, those may fall apart. So you don't really have to worry unless you already feel like your relationship is struggling. We might run into issues surrounding pride and issues surrounding our egos. And, you know, do you feel appreciated? Do you feel recognized? Do you feel like your partner is giving you the attention you desire? Do you feel like your boss is appreciative of all the work that you're doing? Is the job that you're at satisfying your long-term plans and stuff like that? There might be a lot of important questions around ego and things that we find important watch out for drama because it might be easier to slide into fighting instead try to be honest and like talk things out instead of pretending that things are okay or waiting for them to go away because they're not likely to go away exit may come back right as mentioned the retrogrades tend to do that especially venus retrograde I wouldn't recommend immediately jumping back into things, but sometimes you need that experience to find closure or you need that experience to maybe give a relationship a second chance. No matter what it is, it's this experience will likely bring healing, right? And that's ultimately what the retrograde is about. It's facing all these shadows in order to find healing, in order to become more whole and to understand that I think ultimately in the long run to understand that you're not whole because you're with someone, you're whole because you're born whole and complete, right? So if you're feeling confused, if you feel like your relationships are tricky, if you feel like your creative project is you're not sure about your motivation, you're not sure about your, you're not feeling inspired, sort of stay in this, in this confusion meditate on it, journal about it. You never know that, you know, some answers might come to you suddenly without you expecting it. And final advice would be, be careful making big investments, big purchases, doing beauty procedures, 
and even like starting relationships making things official because sometimes if you make a decision during the retrograde you may have to go back on it when venus stations direct on september 3rd some important dates to note on august 20 let actually august 9th 9th august 9th venus will square uranus so that can potentially be even more shaky if you dealt with any relationship drama on july 2nd some of the drama can come back and then august 13th we have venus kazimi which is the turning point or the moment venus comes close to the sun and she gets purified she gets renewed and that could be a turning point when certain things become more become more clear and finally august 22nd is the moment when venus squares jupiter and any aspect to jupiter it tends to be more positive so here you may get a chance to find solutions right there might be watch out for the tendency to overdo things but jupiter is positive jupiter wants to teach us something so the experiences we go through can also be empowering and educational now let's take a look at the 12 rising signs and see what this period can be about for you if you are in aries rising venus is currently in your fifth house and it's about to go retrograde and fifth house represents things we enjoy doing it's the place of romance it's the place of creativity it's the place of children so when venus is retrograding here first thing that you're questioning i think is very much what is joyful what is joyful and worth your time right like what is joyful and destructive because sometimes with venus retrograding in the fifth house you can be examining your habits like maybe you party a bit much or maybe you get involved in relationships that are not long lasting right like relationships that do not serve you and like once again i'm thinking of these like people pleasing tendencies right like is there somewhere in your life where you're doing things to please others because with also with venus ruling your seventh house there might be a need to examine relationships and examine how you handle relationships where are you being too kind of friendly or too loving or too forgiving and where do you need to stand up for yourself and express yourself it may be a period when you're feeling a lack of inspiration and always with the retrogrades the best way to find inspiration is to go back to a project you once did to a passion you once had look back at your life when you were a child and think about what made you happy when you were a child speaking of children fifth house also rules children so sometimes there might be questions connected to kids maybe your child is going through something in their life that needs to be addressed or maybe you're really just looking for that childlike wonder and if you're feeling a lack of inspiration if you're feeling like your relationship is maybe a little bit um kind of you know lacking that spark try to bring it try to revive it but do not force things right like maybe brainstorm with your partner or maybe play a game or have some fun just yeah like the biggest question here is like what is truly enjoyable and helpful versus what is a waste of your time and this could apply to your job because venus rules your house of money it could apply to your relationships and it could apply to your values if you are a taurus rising venus is about to go retrograde in your fourth house of home family and living situation and here you're looking at things that make you feel comfortable and things that you value in your home so this could be very much a literal need for change of place where you live right maybe you're moving maybe you no longer feel excited about your immediate environment venus rules your sixth house so sometimes venus retrograding in your fourth house could be the time when you realize that it's time for a redesign that it's time for to start a renovation project right there might be some kind of literal reshaping that needs to be done in your home it is also fourth house deals with family so sometimes the question of whether you feel like your family values you or whether you feel like relationships with your family 
are satisfying. You may be looking back at your childhood and looking at your past and questioning what's authentic and what is not, right? Venus rules your first house, your Taurus rising, a Venus child. So when she's retrograding in the fourth house, it's a very deep personal time. It's the time of like cleaning of your psyche as well as your environment. So it could be very much a period of examining your beliefs, examining things you have inherited from your family and asking, are they truthful? Are they supportive? Are they the ones that help you feel secure? Or are they actually dragging you down and holding you back? So it could be a time of like I said, cleaning your inner and your outer space. And let me know how this resonates in the comments below. If you are a Gemini rising, Venus is about to go retrograde in your third house and third house deals with your skills, hobbies, communication, siblings, your everyday life, people you talk to, um, skills you project, knowledge you express, community kind of conversations you make. So on some level, Venus in the third house could bring up topics of what is worth talking about, right? Like third house being the place of self-expression and, and writing and scheduling and things that you do every day. It's very much like what is worth your time? What is worth your attention? What do you truly value? So you are examining, you may be examining your immediate connections and relationships and looking at neighbors or friendships that you spend time with and maybe you don't feel supported by so it could be an opportunity to do some cleanup and perhaps reconsider what worth your what is worth your time if you are a creative individual right if you write or if you have a podcast or you have a blog this might be the time when you're seeking new energy or you're seeking inspiration and you're feeling like things are maybe things have gotten out of control or they've gotten out of hand or you haven't felt connected to the material you're working on so if you're feeling this way take a break right go to the beach go shopping do something nice to yourself that will let you pamper that venus in leo energy and yeah look look at things that have always made you happy and look for ways to bring your true self into the work that you're doing because you can never go wrong and let me know if this resonates in the comments below if you are a cancer rising venus is about to go retrograde in your second house of money and values and because it's the house of money there might be literal financial questions you have to address Perhaps your spending habits are not serving you. Perhaps you have received a sum of money or you have... There's a giant airplane flying above. I think it looks giant because it's super close. So you're, you're definitely looking at your spending habits and you're looking at the financial questions and you're trying to find a better flow I think and you're trying to examine because when you have as a cancer rising you have Leo in your second house you may have quite expensive taste right and maybe you spend on purses that you know you spend a lot of money on clothes but then you are not paying your bills on time so Venus retrograding here could be a period of like reprioritizing and rethinking what's important to you it might be the time when your finances are going through a change. Um, either it's the change that you started or it's the change that is inspired by some kind of bills you have to pay or debts you have to handle. A lot of times, you know, Venus has been in your second house since early June. She could have brought some resources your way, but then when she goes retrograde, you may end up spending the money you received, maybe handling some urgent bills that you need to address and the biggest question here because second house also represents values and things you enjoy I think it's very much does your job make you happy do you feel like your income is 
appropriate, right? Like, do you feel like you're getting rewarded financially? And also, are you actually doing the work that is making you happy? Because with as a Cancer rising, you have North Node kind of starting its 18 month cycle in your 10th house of career and status and reputation and so you're in this place of perhaps starting something new and starting to express yourself differently and as venus is retrograding in the second house the big question here is like what is of true value to you it might be the time spent with your child it might be the time spent with your friends it might be your job or your hobby that you do so look at those things and look at the things that make you feel valued and secure and appreciated and perhaps find ways to turn them into the source of income or to turn them into an everyday kind of work that you do have you been considering anything like that as a cancer rising what what have you been valuing lately let me know in the comments below if you are a Leo rising, this is a big deal because Venus is about to go retrograde in your first house, which is the house of self. It's the house of physical body and your personality and your style, right? So when the planet of beauty goes retrograde in your first house, you may start to feel like it's time for a style change, right? It might be the time to trim, to cut, to reshape. Of course, we don't really recommend doing any major procedures during the retrograde because you can regret the changes you made. So do not go and make drastic changes, right? But maybe this is a lovely opportunity to think about things, to do research and browse and, you know, think what kind of skincare you can get or how can you shape your hair to better fit your face or maybe you can color your hair. Um, if you have a brand, because Venus also rules your 10th house and your third house. If you have a brand, if you have a business that is closely connected to your heart, this could also be the time to rebrand. This could be the time to rethink, right? Venus and Leo wants to be recognized. It wants to be put on a pedestal and admired. So you're basically considering whether your work because Venus rules your 10th, whether your immediate connections, whether your relationships, or and whether your appearance or your habits, your everyday routines, whether they make you feel valued. Because it starts, here it very much starts within, right? Like, are you happy in your own skin? And if you don't feel happy, what kind of changes can you make? Where can you speak up? Where can you assert yourself in order to find a better, joyful life? If you are a Virgo rising, Venus is about to go retrograde in your 12th house. So here, 12th house is the place of mental health. It's the place of spirituality. It's the place of self-defeating tendencies. So when Venus is retrograding here, it could be, it could be a bit more internalized where you're struggling with things, but they're less obvious, right? Like, we just talked about Venus retrograding in Leo for Leo rising, and it might be a lot more visible. It might be an actual rebrand for Leo rising, but with Venus retrograding in the 12th house, you're very much being more introspective and kind of almost like retrospective because you're looking at your past and you're looking at your romantic choices and wondering whether your choices have served you well or whether things you're doing right now even are they making you happy are they bringing you to the place that you're trying to go to right like venus venus retrograding in the 12th house could be very much about tendency to date people who are unavailable because you yourself are struggling and you yourself has been through trauma and you're scared to open up so you keep choosing people who cannot you cannot have a relationship with right like it could be a very eye-opening period of coming to terms with yourself and like understanding yourself and understanding your own self-defeating tendencies when it comes to relationships um therapy can be very eye-opening right now meditation journaling 
talking to a friend, anything like that. I would avoid um, taking back your exes. There might be a strong pull to contact someone from the past. Sometimes, sometimes you kind of need to because you get that final you see it again right you see that this person left your life for a reason and you understand that okay i made the right choice but do kind of nice things for yourself and make good choices around this time lean into self-care more so than trying to find someone who can help you focus on yourself and self-growth if you are a Libra rising, my lovely Libra risings, Venus is about to retrograde in your 11th house of friendships, networks, social media, your dreams, your role in the collective. So there's a lot of questions here. Um, friendships, right? Friendships, networks, people you hang out with could be up for review. In Leo, we very much want to be the leader of the pack. Of the pack, we want to be the leader of our group, right? With with the eleventh house being in Leo, and we want to be valued. We want to have friends that perhaps give us compliments or appreciate us somehow. So, with the retrograde here, your friendships can go through a more difficult period. There might be certain truths, truths that come up, certain kind of questions that you have to address in relationships and question yeah like can your friendship be, be salvaged is there a way to actually talk openly about things or are you maybe there are some connections that are better left behind that are better left in the past your friend can actually be also go through a t going through a tough time and that tough time can be very telling and very revealing it might show how strong your bond is and it might test you as well whether you are a good friend and whether you're willing to help them out but i think like you know being that this period is about joy and venus in leo wants to be appreciated wants to kind of have fun and play you're looking at your friendships through that lens and you're wondering is this connection fun is it helpful is it enjoyable or have you sort of been dreading hanging out with people rethinking your relationship with social media rethinking your how you spend time on social media for me it's sort of an important topic as a libra rising because i keep feeling like i could do better like i could have better boundaries with social media sometimes even if it's my day off i still end up sort of doing work and checking things so looking at you know who are you subscribing to even just cleaning your the list of channels that you're following right um you should star my channel but like everything else maybe send send on their way but yeah like being being more selective being more thoughtful about those things if you're working on any creative projects they may stall and there may be some difficulties you have to address. Do not fear that. Instead, let yourself kind of figure it out. Um, and the final thing I'm going to say is financial matters can also show up or perhaps perhaps a sense of give and take in relationships, whether, it, when, whether if it's about the money or it's about just sort of sense of fairness between the things you give and the things you take um because venus rules your eighth house and that's where i'm taking that from so maybe examining how fair things are and not just how enjoyable they are if you are a scorpio rising venus is retrograding is about to go retrograde in your 10th house and this is the place of career status reputation what are you known for in professional context? What kind of passion projects you have? So as Venus is retrograding here, your professional inspiration can be lacking. It might be the time when you are reevaluating, right? Venus in the 10th really wants to do work that is pleasurable. It wants to do creative work. Maybe it wants to work with other people maybe it wants to do relationship work right like relationship counseling or some kind of um 
work in the wedding sector or whatever it might be. It's just a lot more focused on having fun and enjoying work as well as being appreciated. So here you're looking at the things you're doing every day professionally and you're asking whether they bring you joy, right? Whether they are fun or have you just been going through the motions? Have you been promised a raise and you're not getting one? Have you been promised the promotion and it's not coming? Sorry for the ambient sound. There's crazy air traffic today and sadly I do not control it. I wish there was a mute button on it. But yeah, rethinking your professional goals, rethinking your professional relationships, relationships with bosses, relationships with partners. Venus rules your seventh house of romantic relationships. So you may also be examining those and looking at them from a point of view of longevity. Like, are you in a marriage, but you have very different views on things? Or are you dating someone, but you want to move to Paris and they don't ever want to live their hometown? So getting kind of clear about those topics, having some serious conversations and use this period to look back at the projects that made you happy, to look back at the things that once inspired you and maybe bring some of that back into your life and make a plan, right? Like if you're thinking of the things that you've enjoyed doing in the past, come up with a plan how to get you to where you're trying to go. And let me know how this resonates in the comments below. If you are a Sagittarius rising, Venus is about to go retrograde in your ninth house. And ninth house rules a few different things. Um, it rules travel and education, right? So there might be certain conflicts and problems you run into connected to travel and education. Traveling, you know, there might be a sense that maybe you have been wanting to go on adventure, but there is all these delays and all these problems that you're struggling to find motivation to keep going. So maybe it's the time to take a step back and reconsider, you know, and come up with, with a plan to actually get you there. Maybe you have a dream to go to Europe, but your finances or your work doesn't allow for that right now. So start with a smaller trip, right? Like try to think outside the box. Maybe you feel unhappy with the place you live and you're looking for that joy, right? Venus and Leo really wants to feel joyful and happy. And so trying to find, maybe look for apartments or think about places, even thinking about places from the past, right? Venus is moving back. So maybe you're looking at the apartment you once had or the neighborhood you once lived in and thinking of how you can go back there and go back to that feeling and sometimes it doesn't necessarily mean returning to the exact same place, but bringing some of that energy into your life. Maybe it means going exploring. Maybe it means finding a local coffee shop or a local spot that you enjoy kind of hanging out at. Legal matters can get drawn out. There might be certain questions you're addressing. Maybe you've been waiting for a court case, court date to be set, or you've been waiting for immigration status, for your immigration status to be updated, anything like that, anywhere where you have to deal with the government or you have to deal with like bureaucracy and documents. It's also the house of publishing, so sometimes you might have to deal with certain publishing matters. And it's also the place of beliefs and philosophies, right? It's the place of your mindset. So more than anything else here, you are examining your values and you're examining your guiding principles. Potentially something has been happening in your life where your old beliefs no longer satisfy you. Your old beliefs maybe are too limiting. So the retrograde can definitely offer you an opportunity to step outside the known and you can do so by learning, you can do so by traveling, you can do so by exploring around you and opening yourself up to people of different cultures, to philosophies of different parts of the world and different perspectives. Let me know how this resonates in the comments below. 
If you are a Capricorn rising, Venus is about to go retrograde in your 8th house and 8th house deals with the resources of other people. And Venus wants to get along, right? Like she wants to partner up with others, she wants to have um, a good time, but she also in the 8th house specifically, she wants to have like happy relationships and maybe access to the resources of others. So when she's retrograding, you are examining all of these relationships. You are examining your dependencies and your contractual or even unspoken agreements with other people. And you're asking whether things fair, right? Like whether you feel like your relationships are equal and you're getting as much as you're putting in. And if you are not receiving kind of what you are worthy off it could be professional it could be personal it could be your romantic partner or a friend right that venus rules your 10th house so definitely professional and rules your fifth house so definitely romantic or creative partner um if you're a writer right now right like and writers are on strike this is very literal this is like i deserve more and you should give me more and similarly in the these give and take dynamics with other people you are perhaps renegotiating and you are it might be the time to assert yourself it might be this the time to state your value and also examine any connections any agreements any relationships that are too taxing that are not supportive that do not give you that sense of joy and do not light the fire in your heart perhaps there are some connections that need to be released because eighth house is the place of other people's resources but it's also the place of transformations it's a place in which we let a part of ourselves die we lay it to rest and we perhaps find something that's more authentic with venus being being retrograde right like what kind of connections what kind of agreements are more aligned with who you are at your core if you are an Aquarius rising, this is the quintessential Venus retrograde in the house of relationships, business partnerships, the house of agreements, contracts, anywhere where you engage with other people, right? And when Venus goes retrograde here, you may feel unsure of your relationship. You may feel unsure of your marriage, of your... Um, desires of your values of whether you and your partner are the right people for one another it could definitely be the period where your relationship goes through the gauntlet it goes through a test and you see whether it's worth whether it's dead or whether it's worth keeping around right are you and your partner on the same page are you feeling alive when you are with them are you feeling inspired right like everything that venus and leo desires venus and leo wants to be appreciated <laughs> hearing sounds um, she wants to be put on a pedestal she wants to be treated like a queen do you feel that way right do you feel like this is the relationship you are meant to be in this is even you know even looking at your kind of values around family because Venus also rules your fourth house at your beliefs and philosophies and ideals because Venus rules your ninth house and questioning whether you and your partner are on the same page whether you can make things work if you're single this could be about your relationships with your kind of work wife right or your work husband or what you seek in a relationship maybe it's the time to reconsider what kind of dynamics you draw in and what kind of partnerships you want in your life um excess can definitely come back um this is even more so likely because venus rules your seventh house looking back at like past relationships even if exes don't show up in a physical form you may be examining whether that relationship from the past whether it's what it was like maybe you know like there might be a tendency to idealize it and look at it wistfully and think like you know things were amazing back then be careful getting back to the old partner sliding back into the same comfortable dynamics sometimes you have to because you need to find closure but just be mindful that it might be 
trap. <laughs> And yeah, like renegotiating, renegotiating contracts, renegotiating business agreements, renegotiating your relationship with your business partner, trying to kind of bring that spark, that inspiration, that alignment into the relationships is likely. And let me know how has your love life been with all of this Venus and Mars action already since June in your seventh house in the comments below. Now, if you are a Pisces rising, Venus is about to go retrograde in your sixth house and she rules your third and she rules your eighth. Sixth house is the place of health. It's the place of everyday work and service. And so when Venus is retrograding here, there might be certain health matters that you need to look at. Your diet, your exercise routines and on one hand, you may feel a lack of inspiration, a lack of desire to take care of yourself or maybe feeling like you're putting a lot of effort into something, but it's not giving you good results because in sixth house, in the sixth house, we tend to labor over things. We tend to put a lot of sweat and tears into projects and we don't necessarily see the results, right? So maybe your health needs attention. Maybe you've been on a diet that is not fun. Like maybe you cannot eat dairy or whatever it might be, right? And so here you're looking for ways to take care of yourself with more joy, right? Maybe it's about taking dance classes. Maybe it's about um, getting your partner to do it with you. Like you can start working out with your partner. Maybe it's about giving yourself a treat every time, every time you do something kind for yourself. Could also be the time when you're examining your bad habits, right? In the sixth house, it could be like drinking a bit much, eating a bit much, not taking care of your health the way you're supposed to take care of yourself. Um, and trying to bring in some healthy, happy habits in your life. And as well, because Leo really wants to, Leo also wants to be creative, right? So maybe one of the ways that you can make these like everyday matters, everyday routines and struggles more fun. Maybe it's the maybe it's the time to start like a YouTube channel and document your progress or do anything of the other things I mentioned, right? Like try to find ways to make your everyday life fun. And if you are working on something that is tough, there might be certain setbacks, there might be certain delays, right? Even to your health, there might be some kind of like my boyfriend is a Pisces rising, he had his first surgery. They found out he needs a second surgery on his knee. So there is a lot of like waiting and things being a little bit frustrating and it's like less fun. So I encourage you to find ways to have fun, right? To find ways to make sticky places less sticky through adding music, through adding um, journaling, through adding social media, filming yourself, being creative, anything like that could make it more fun and yeah take good care of yourself do not be worried if things feel low right now they will definitely in kind of speed up and start looking up and looking better when Venus goes direct on September 3rd and until then I hope we can all handle it with grace and poise and peace and get out of it safe and sound and happy I'll talk to you very soon thank you for um, listening to the sounds of the traffic, if you can hear them, and bearing with me. Okay, bye.